This stone weighs more than 1,200 tons. It was cut with extreme precision. It was meant to be moved uphill, and there is no Roman record explaining how. Not a sketch, not a description, not a single line of text. And the deeper you look at Baalbek, the less Roman this place begins to feel. The Baalbek stones are considered one of the enduring mysteries associated with the Roman age. Six enormous stone blocks lie in Lebanon's historic Beka Valley, home to the ancient city of Heliopolis, known today as Baalbek. The name Baal is commonly associated with meanings such as Lord, God or Son in Phoenician tradition. Atop the mound known as Tel Baalbek stands a Roman temple of Jupiter, built around 2,000 years ago, resting on three colossal stone blocks, collectively known as the Trilithon, or Three Stones. Each of these stones measures approximately 19 meters in length, 4.2 meters in height, and 3.6 meters in thickness, with estimated weights ranging between 750 and 800 tons. Three additional massive stones are not part of the temple structure itself and remain in an ancient limestone quarry roughly 900 meters away from the Trilithon's location. Often referred to as Roman monoliths, the sheer size of these blocks has long puzzled archaeologists, particularly given that stones of far smaller dimensions would have been structurally sufficient. The first of these quarry stones to attract archaeological attention was the Stone of the Pregnant Woman, a megalith weighing close to 1,000 tons that lies partially buried in the ground. Although it is the smallest of the three, it is the most widely known, largely due to its remarkable state of preservation and the fact that it has never been completely concealed by sediment. Several explanations have been proposed for its unusual name. One local legend tells of a pregnant woman who claimed she could move the stone if the people of Baalbek provided her with food until she gave birth. Another interpretation links the name to folklore involving supernatural beings, sometimes described as pregnant jinn, who are believed to have been tasked with cutting and moving the stone. Other traditions suggest the name reflects a long-held belief that touching the stone may enhance fertility. The second monolith, known as the Stone of the South, was identified in the 1990s and is estimated to weigh approximately 1,242 tons. The most enigmatic of the three, however, is often referred to as the Forgotten Stone. In 2014, archaeologists from the German Archaeological Institute documented this massive block located adjacent to and partially beneath the stone of the pregnant woman, with an estimated weight of around 1,497 tons. The forgotten stone is frequently described as one of the largest stone blocks ever quarried in antiquity, raising significant questions about how such immense slabs might have been intended for transport using the engineering methods known to have existed during the Roman period. There is no clear historical record identifying who commissioned these stones or explaining why they were ultimately left in the quarry. From a practical standpoint, Roman builders typically relied on numerous smaller blocks to construct monumental architecture. In the case of the Trilithon, it has been suggested that systems involving rollers, levers or pulleys may have been used. However, given that the Temple of Jupiter sits at a higher elevation than the quarry, transporting stones of this magnitude would have posed exceptional logistical challenges. As for the remaining quarry stones, they are generally believed to have been intended for use in the nearby Jupiter Temple complex, possibly as additional elements of the Trilithon. It is often proposed that their extraordinary size may have played a role in why they were never moved from the quarry. Unlike typical Roman construction, which emphasized visible grandeur and decorative architecture, the Trilithon stones were not meant to be seen. They were embedded deep within the temple's foundation, hidden from view, and appear to have served a primarily structural role. This has led many researchers to question why such effort would be invested in moving stones of this scale, only to conceal them beneath the structure. There is no surviving Roman documentation that describes how these stones were transported or positioned. This absence is notable, given the Romans' reputation for detailed record-keeping and their tendency to document major engineering achievements. Yet no contemporary account explains how the massive foundation blocks of the Temple of Jupiter were installed. Additionally, the contrasting construction techniques visible at Baalbek, 
from the finely finished megalithic blocks at the base to the comparatively simpler Roman masonry above, have led some historians to suggest that the site may have undergone multiple phases of construction. According to this interpretation, earlier phases may reflect a different level of craftsmanship than the later Roman additions. According to historical estimates, the largest Roman cranes were capable of lifting loads of roughly 60 metric tons, making it highly unlikely that they were used to raise stones weighing 900 tons or more. Roman builders typically drilled Lewis holes into blocks to allow cranes to lift them, yet such holes are not evident in the Trilithon stones. When examined closely, the contrast between the massive foundation blocks and the masonry above them becomes immediately apparent. A closer inspection of the stone surfaces reveals a series of unusual parallel markings. These markings appear on multiple megalithic blocks throughout the complex, including on the Trilithon stones themselves. The grooves are approximately 3 meters or 10 feet in length and maintain a strikingly consistent parallel pattern. Such features do not easily align with what would be expected from conventional hand-tool stoneworking methods and have prompted debate about how they were produced. Viewers familiar with similar archaeological sites may notice that these markings closely resemble those found at other large-scale megalithic locations, such as the Yangshan Quarry in China, where an enormous unfinished stone estimated to weigh over 16,000 tons remains in place. Researchers have noted visual similarities between the surface markings at Yangshan and those seen on the stones at Baalbek. Comparable marks have also been identified in Petra, in present-day Jordan. These markings appear in the oldest sections of the site, predating the Nabataean Kingdom, which established Petra in the 4th century BC. In some areas, particularly near the edges of the stone blocks, the markings become even more unusual. These finer details are exceptionally small and precise, to the point that replicating them with rough tools would be extremely challenging. Even more striking are the edges of the blocks themselves. When examined closely, a thin continuous line can be observed along the boundary, where adjoining surfaces meet the bevel. This line measures less than a third of a millimeter in thickness. The method used to create such a precise feature remains unknown, and producing it with traditional tools would have required an extraordinary level of control. The edges of the blocks feature a multi-phase chamfer, identical in shape across adjacent stones. These facets appear to have been crafted with remarkable accuracy, with some sections showing signs of polishing. The precision of this workmanship is especially evident in a small notch where the stones meet, engineered to tolerances measured in fractions of a millimeter. And if these stones already appear to exceed what is typically attributed to Roman engineering, what remains in the quarry raises even deeper questions. Here's where things become even more intriguing. About half a mile from the main temple lies a quarry that appears to be the origin point of these massive blocks. Evidence suggests the stones there were not intended to be isolated examples. Abandoned for centuries, three unfinished monoliths remain in place, each rivaling or exceeding the size of the Trilithon stones. The first is the stone of the pregnant woman, weighing close to 1,000 tons. Nearby lies the Stone of the South, identified in the 1990s and estimated to weigh around 1,200 tons. In 2014, archaeologists documented an even larger block, the Forgotten Stone, with an estimated weight of approximately 1,500 tons. Local legends surrounding these stones have persisted for generations. Each generation has attempted to rationalize what appears, at first glance, to be an extraordinary undertaking. Even modern engineers remain divided on how such stones could have been moved. One modern study proposed that transporting a 557-ton block across level ground could require more than 500 workers using advanced equipment. When factoring in an uphill route and the need to raise the stone approximately 23 feet into position, some estimates suggest the workforce required could number in the tens of thousands, potentially exceeding the population of many small cities. This leads to a fundamental question. Why would ancient builders choose stones of such immense size when smaller blocks would have served the same structural purpose? What motivated them to pursue a solution that appears to push the limits of feasibility, even by modern standards? The Baalbek megaliths do more than challenge conventional views of ancient engineering. 
they continue to provoke debate, raising new questions with every study and excavation. The question of who built Baalbek has fueled decades of discussion, competing theories and ongoing research. And as new evidence emerges, the picture becomes increasingly complex. So Baalbek leaves us with a problem, not a theory. The Romans were master builders, but they avoided stones like these. The quarry suggests the project failed, not succeeded. And the precision points to methods we still don't understand, which leaves only three possibilities. The Romans inherited this. They attempted something beyond their limits. Or this foundation belongs to a much older phase we've never identified. And Baalbek is not the only place where this pattern appears. The next site pushes this problem even further.